so hi everyone today we will try to understand what are permutation tests and why they are required okay so let's first of all look okay, why we need have permutation tests and eventually then we'll jump into the mathematics and the codes so let's get started so basically if you have in the data science space you must have uh, heard about hypothesis testing now there are different versions of hypothesis testing t test z test anova which i'm not covering as i have already covered in a previous blog so you can go and check them out now a big problem with t test z test and anova basically falling into the hypothesis testing category is that they have a few assumptions about the data before uh, doing the testing that is the data should be normally distributed there is an assumption of equal variances also so basically what is equal variances uh, the assumption says that spread of the dependent variable that is the variance should be same across all the different groups or levels of independent variables so basically if you have a variable a and eventually uh, you have a target variable b so the variance of the target variable b should be uh, the uh, should be equal or almost equal within different categories of target variable a so that is the assumption of equal variances you can read about it on the internet now permutation testing uh, is not restricted by any sort of a assumption so this can be a better tool when you are going for uh, when you don't know about the distribution of the data set or when the assumption of equal variances is getting violated it is a very primary issue that can happen in real world because in real world you all know that assumptions are really followed also you can use different statistics like mean median variance etc and not restricted to mean so permutation testing can be taken as a next step from hypothesis testing where if assumptions are not met you can go for permutation testing so how it is done uh, where it is find its use cases permutation testing can be used for conducting hypothesis testing as already told uh, it can be used for uh, ab testing also and as well as abcd testing also and third it can also help in uh, figuring out collinearity between variables so as you have seen that it has got a lot of use cases so let's try to understand how does permutation testing work so basically we'll go with a basic example assume that we wish to compare whether a particular drink say bon vita affects the body weight of the people who are drinking it from different age groups so we will have uh, weights for four age groups age less than 15 between 30 to 15 between 30 to 45 and more than 45 here you can see that assume that this is the data set that we have got for group a we have 100 samples for b we have got 50 c 60 and d 80. Uh, the statistic that we would be calculating and then eventually that we will be comparing would be the differences in means now what does this mean so basically we would be calculating the mean value the mean weight for each of the groups and eventually we will we will calculating the average for the differences within the group mean a minus mean b then plus mean a minus mean c so differences between the mean of different groups we would be averaging that that is called as differences difference in means so this is a statistic that we will be using in permutation testing but you can use other uh, test statistics like ratio of means also and then multiple other categories that you can go and check out on the internet so let's get started so first of all in permutation testing we need to define a null hypothesis which is very simple to hypothesis testing only where in the null hypothesis we will be stating that there is no change between the groups so basically no weight change due to bon vita in any groups this becomes a null hypothesis secondly we will be setting up a significance level as we do in hypothesis testing also that is alpha now this value we will be taking as 0.05 that is a standard value the third thing that we would be doing is calculating the mean weight for each of the group a b c d that we have got and then calculating the observed difference in means as i told you the formula for difference in means so basically we'll be calculating the difference in means for each of the group a b c d with the true data set and eventually we'll be calling it as observed difference in means now we will start with permutation testing so basically what we will do that we, uh, we will take all the samples from different groups and merge them together to form a single group so as you remember uh, group a has 100 group b has 50 group c has 60 and group d has 80 samples so the total number of samples becomes 290 now what we will be doing that we will be running x iterations wherein each iteration what we will be doing we will be using these 290 samples we will be creating four new groups a1 b1 c1 d1 that would be acting as an alias for the original groups with the same sample size but uh, samples will be randomly picked from this 290 samples so if you read it here we will be creating groups a1 b1 c1 d1 from sampling from the pool data set such that the group size remains the same so a1 will get 100 b1 will get 50 c1 will get 60 d1 will get, d1 will get 81 80 now if you uh, notice all the samples from different groups would get mixed up so now when talking about group a1 it won't be having all the samples from a 
right so it, it it has now got a mix of samples from all the remaining groups also this resampling is done without replacement in default settings even now we will be calculating the difference in means as we calculated uh, in the first step for all these x iterations so, so what we are doing in each of the iteration we are creating new groups and calculating the difference in means for all of the new groups that we have got so uh, we would be repeating this step for x iterations now once we are done with x iteration we will be having x samples for difference in means right for one for each of the iteration we are getting one difference in means value the next step is to calculate the p value so how the p value is calculated is not calculated as we do in the case of hypothesis testing so basically what we will be doing is that we will be checking out how many difference in means that we calculated while during our x iterations are greater than the observed difference in means that we calculated in the first step so assume that uh, we as assume x to be 100 and out of which the difference of mean which is greater than the observed difference in means from the x iterations is 10 so for 10 uh, out of the 100 iterations 10 times we we got the difference in means greater than the observed difference in mean let it be y y equal to 10 now we'll be calculating the p value equals to y upon n where y equals to the number that we calculated in the above step and, and n equals to total number of iterations we run that is 10 upon 100 equals to 0 0.1 now if the p value is less than the significance level the null hypothesis can be rejected it is very similar to what we do in hypothesis testing so uh, as the significance level is 0 0.05 and the p value that we got is 0 0.1 Hence, you can state that the null hypothesis can't be rejected. Now, this was the mathematics about permutation testing. Permutation testing can be of two types depending upon how we are creating the resampled data set. As we saw in the default settings, we were doing resampling without rep uh, replacement. In case of exhaustive permutation testing, there won't be any X. We would be calculating each and every possible permutation that is possible and then calculating the difference of means for each of the possible permutation. Now, if we have read about permutation and combinations in mathematics, the total number of such combinations that are possible, if we have 290 samples, is this number. Combination 290 upon uh, combination 100 into combination 190, 50, combination 140, 60, combination 80, 80. Right. Now, this would be a very huge number. That is why exhaustive permutation tests are considered to be very computationally heavy and hence not feasible for big data sets. The second type of permutation testing is bootstrapped permutation testing in which we would be resampling a data set with replacement. So in default setting, it was without replacement. In bootstrap, it would be with replacement. The final uh, set of the this particular block is how to implement in Python. So basically, I was Googling through how to implement in Python. Eventually, I found out two major libraries. One is permutation underscore test and other is MLX10. Now, now a big limitation that I figured out, I think uh, I'm not able to figure out how to implement permutation testing for multiple groups using these libraries but for two groups it is possible so if you wish to do it for multiple groups i think you need to write a code from scratch or you can have to search a little bit more so in this particular blog i will be adding a sample for two groups come uh, doing a permutation test over two groups so this is a data set that we have got four one nine nine two zero there are ten samples similarly we have got a reference data. so assume data to be a ref data to be b so we are doing a permutation test between two groups a and b now, if we do this, we would be first pip installing the permutation underscore test library and then p dot permutation test we will be passing these two lists as parameters. If you look into the output, it is giving multiple things, but the most important is the p value. So the p value here you can see that 0 0.21. Hence, if we go by significance level of 0 0.05, the p value is way greater than that, and eventually the null hypothesis stays.